Welcome to this month's edition of What's New for Apps Admins, where we cover the new features in Google Apps that have rolled out over the last month. My name is Barry Schmel, and I'm a member of the Google for Work training team, and I'll be walking you through the January updates. Let's take a look at our agenda. We'll start with our headline news, talk about the latest Vault updates, and then some Drive updates. Let's start with the headline news for January. There's a new look for Google Apps Admin Console. Yes, the Admin Console has been redesigned, launching to both rapid release and scheduled release domains gradually, starting in the last week in January. Based on the principles of material design, which we announced at Google I.O. last June, the new Admin Console creates a single underlining design system that allows for a beautiful unified experience across platforms and device sizes, smooth animations and transitions, quick access to elements you need most often, and a more colorful, beautiful UI experience for our admins. You've seen these design principles apply to many of Google's products recently. The Admin Console is next in line. Let's take a look at the new Admin Console. There's a short video you can watch to get better acquainted with the new Admin Console. Notice that the icons for each action are the same and appear in your dashboard. Navigation, however, has vastly improved. Use the navigation menu to quickly and easily move between the various actions or return to the home page, which is your dashboard. Let's take a look at the users page. You'll notice that the filters are on the left side of the page, not the right side. Also, the most important actions are listed in the menu next to each user. So I can reset a user's password from here, or rename, delete, suspend, or even send an email to one of your users. Other actions can be taken from a second menu located at the toolbar. You can hide and show the filters using the filters icon. You can add a user by clicking on the plus button or selecting one of the other methods, such as add multiple users, which is the bulk upload using a CSV file. Hover over a user gives you the option to select them. The menu option changes once you've selected users, so you can take action on several users at once, such as delete users or restore data for your users. Other important actions appear as icons, such as add users to a group, move to another organization, and manage user licenses. Clicking on a user's name brings up a page with more detailed user information. Once again, most important actions appear as icons, while remaining actions are on the menu. You can configure various settings for this user by expanding these sections. From the account section, I can require that a user change their password as the next sign-in. And I can also add an alias. Click Save Changes to apply them. Click the section name again, and it closes that section. Now let's look at the company profile, which I can easily get to from the navigation menu. Select the profile to view those settings. Notice once again how clear the radio buttons are, as well as the check boxes. Let's look at one more section. Let's look at reports, which I can get to from the navigation menu. And when I select Apps Usage Activity, notice the filters once again are on the left side of the page. And when I select Columns, notice how clear the checkboxes are. Click Send Feedback at any time so you can provide your feedback and comments. As you can see, you can find the same functionality in the new Admin Console as the previous, but with a new look and feel, smoother transitions, and improved navigation. For more information about the new Admin Console, check out the update announcements and Help Center article links below the slides. Make sure you watch the video, too. Now let's look at the Vault updates for January. We'll start with Gmail labels in Google Vault email search results. To make it easier for Google Apps admins to locate specific emails in Google Vault search, Gmail labels are now included in search results. 
Admins can now view both system labels, the status of the message, such as unread, inbox, spam, sent, and the user applied labels, as in this example, after work. Let's see how this works in Vault's eDiscovery tool. Once you've done a search, in my scenario, we're looking for Betty's messages that contain the term drinks. So I'm actually doing the search. And when I click on a message, I can now show the details. You can see the Gmail labels, the system labels, as well as the user labels. When I refine the search, I can look for a specific label. And now it only shows me those messages that contain the user label after work. Once again, when I look at the details of the message, I can see the labels, both the system and the user labels. Additionally, when you export a message, it will also include the label and the metadata in the XML files. Now we'll see Google Apps Vault added to all Google Apps for Education accounts. In September 2014, we announced that Google Vault will be added to all Google Apps for Education accounts at no charge. In January 2015, We've implemented this change for all new and existing Google Apps for Education customers. So how does this work? Simply, all new Google Apps for Education customers now receive Vault as part of the Google Apps for Education suite for free. Existing Google Apps for Education customers who do not already have Vault enabled now have it added to their account for free. Also, existing Google Apps for Education customers who already have Vault enabled, they won't see any changes. If we look in the admin console, you'll see Google Vault appears as a core Google App service. You'll find Vault under Apps, Google Apps, and listed as one of the core Google App services. It's also important to note Vault customers must first set up a retention policy for archiving to begin. The retention policy tells Vault how long to retain or keep messages in Vault, even if the user deletes messages from their inbox. If you don't set a default policy, Vault won't preserve data according to your organization's policies and legal requirements. Using Vault's eDiscovery tool, your app super admin can set the initial default retention policy. You select Retention and then select Modify Default Retention Period. Notice that initially there is no default retention period specified. That means that Vault is not holding users' messages. Let's go ahead and set a specified number of days. Click Next. And I'm going to set this policy to 10 years. This policy will apply to all users in Vault immediately. So be sure you select an appropriate policy. After this retention period elapses, content is removed from users' mailboxes and deleted with no recovery options. Alternatively, you can retain data indefinitely until you can, are able to define a specific retention period. So don't forget, set a retention policy so Vault will retain your data. For more information about Vault, check out the update announcement, blog post, and Help Center article links below each slide. And by the way, since we're discussing Google Apps for Education, there's a Classroom mobile app and new desktop options for teachers. With the Classroom mobile app, students and teachers can snap a photo right from the assignment page in the mobile app and attach it to their assignment, or share from other apps and easily attach images, PDFs, and web pages. And with offline caching, you can see your assignments even when you don't have an internet connection. Now let's take a look at some Drive updates. There's a new status menu and bandwidth control for Google Drive for Mac PC. Google Drive for Mac PC syncs any and all your files to Google Drive on the web, making them available anywhere, anytime, on any device. It also provides secure cloud-based storage for your files. A new version of Google Drive for Mac PC has been gradually rolling out since mid-January, featuring a new, more visually rich status menu. The menu allows people to more clearly follow their sync status, including guidance on already synced files, files currently syncing, and files yet to be synced. When you hover over a recently synced file, you'll see an icon that saves you steps by letting you share it right from the menu. You can also now show to limit how much bandwidth drive consumes while syncing your files, 
for those times when you need extra bandwidth for something else. You can do that in the advanced section of the Preferences menu. Also, if you hadn't noticed yet, last month we announced the Docs Editors, Doc Sheets and Slides. They've been added to the App Launcher. The Editors icons are on the first screen of the App Launcher, along with your other Google Apps products. And lastly, we want you to stay informed. If you're looking for a full rundown of all the features released last month, then check out the Google Apps release calendar, where you can see the date and the type for each release. Or alternatively, check out the What's New in Google Apps newsletter for all the updates and more info on what they mean. You can find this newsletter on the What's New page above the release calendar or in the link below. So that's it from us this month. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your comments and questions below. This has been What's New for Apps Admins, January 2015 edition. I'm Barry Schmel. Thanks and catch you all next month.